Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and this week we're playing with dyeing yarn with natural indigo. I have this iron vat set up and I thought it would be fun to try dyeing an intact ball of yarn in this indigo vat. I know that you can do a lot of resist dyeing techniques, but I'm curious how far the dye will penetrate in this ball of yarn. Um, clearly all the exposed areas will be able to take up color, but will we still see it penetrate all the way through? So let's find out. This yarn ball that I have is Knit Picks Dishy in the colorway Swan. It's 100 grams of 100% cotton, um, a worsted weight yarn, and it is still wound in the ball that it came in from Knit Picks. Now I am going to go and pre-soak this ball of yarn in some plain tap water overnight. I want the yarn to be completely saturated and I also want to remove as much of the air from the yarn as possible. So while this ball of yarn is in, in the pre-soak, I will be squeezing it to try to, to try to squeeze out any air, as much air as possible. All right, I am putting on my gloves. We are outside with our indigo vat that I got to successfully reduce today. It started off as an iron vat. That didn't really work. So we transitioned it to a hydrosulfite vat. And that, whoa, look at that. Um, you can find more information um, about exactly what I did in on the YouTube channel. So now we're finally getting more of a film, um, sort of pushing it to the side. And I've got our pre-soaked ball of yarn, which since my vat initially failed, it pre-soaked for a few days. But we're gonna take it and submerge it into our vat. And you can see the green color, and if I bring it up, you can see the, the yarn is taking on this sort of yellow color. And I think I'm going to squeeze it because, uh, you know, we're hoping for some kind of gradient, but I'm going to squeeze it in here so that way maybe, I don't know if we'll get dye that penetrates the whole thing. If this ball of yarn is, I mean, there's not exactly a ton of resist here per se, but will we see some kind of gradient? I don't really know. But I think in general, my dips have been somewhere between 30 seconds and a minute. Trying not to disturb the vet too much. But the one concern with this project is there has been a lot of rinsing so far to get the color out. And the other two projects I've done already, they aren't running clear yet. So I imagine that this one will have a lot of rinsing to do as well. But okay, I'm going to take it out. And in theory, you should try to wring it out as much as possible under the surface. But, you know, and immediately we can see the, the oxidation start to happen. So I've just plonked that <laughs> into my rinse bath, which surprisingly is pretty clear. Oh dear. For the first time, this did not go really dark right away when I went to rinse it. Now you can see I'm gonna have a tangle here <laughs> from, from this end, but I'm gonna squeeze out as much of this water as I can. So that way we can let this oxidation happen. And already, it's hard to know because it's a bright, sunny day, but already this is looking nice and blue. Now, what I don't know is what the inside is going to look like. And, ooh, aha, we do have some white. Okay, we definitely have some white. So we will have some kind of cool gradient. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, I am really excited. You could dip this multiple times 
and but this looks like a really dark color right now it'll probably lighten a lot it's cotton cotton looks a lot darker when it's wet but yeah I I am excited and the rinse isn't so bad actually so cool I mean yeah it's gonna need I mean I'm not seeing any green even when I peek to the inner layers but hey I'm excited our ball of yarn is going to require a lot of rinsing and at some point in not the too distant future I'm also going to need to open it up and wind it onto the nitty knotty I am not going to show a lot of the rinsing it's going to take a lot a lot of rinses and the color doesn't really seem to change that much through the rinsing the color will get a lot lighter once it dries because it's cotton and cotton always looks a lot darker when it's wet. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. But if you want to see some more of the rinsing and me talking about rinsing, look at a few of the other videos for the Indigo Week. Oh dear, this is going to be a lot of fun to untangle. But hey, not a lot of color is coming off, so that's good at least, right? I rinsed it for a while and there's still some bleeding, but honestly there was still some bleeding. Uh, very minimally at the end, but a tiny bit left in some of the other yarns. And I figured it was worth leaving that little bit of bleeding and then testing for rub fastness. But none of this is getting on my hands. And so, or none of the color at least is getting on my hands. So I decided that I'm going to leave it outside for a little while to dry out. So then I can wind it around a nitty knotty this evening and we can look at the gradient. Here is the cotton gradient wound onto my Nitty Knotty. And this is great. Sometimes when you dye a commercial ball of yarn or a yarn cake or something, you end up with a tiny bit of the darkest color and then a lot more of the speckled or something that, you know, is predominantly more one section than the other. I would say that this one is about a third dark blue. Then there's sort of half and half. Um, for maybe a third or so. And then there's a section that's got a lot more white for the last bit. So this really feels like a great true gradient. The other thing that I want to point out as we check this out is that my hands are clean. Um, I had just, you know, rinsed and squeezed this in the bucket. It wasn't necessarily clear yet um, and I was really nervous. I was really, really nervous about uh, winding this and making a mess inside my house because, of course, I did this inside instead of outside. But it's great. And now I am going to add some more ties and then go wash it. But yeah, I think that this is awesome. I love that the indigo penetrated really deeply, actually, into the ball but that we did still get some white behind without any tight forms of resist. Okay, now we're gonna wash the yarn. And I feel like with all the rinsing outside, things have been pretty neutralized already, but still adding the splashes in here. You know what I recommend? Trying to balance things out as you're washing. And of course, I'm using a tub that will make it a little hard to see if we've got color linking. But I believe we do have some runoff. Just because this is my container. But all things considered, that's almost no color. There's just a hue in here to begin with. So, I think that's great. I'm adding some, some dish soap, which will cause some bleeding, but it's better to get the bleeding there comes the color. It's better to have the bleeding come out when you're washing the yarn than having it rub off on your needles. And I plan to do a rub test with all of these yarns that I've dyed with the indigo. Nothing has dried from it yet, but I am very excited. So I expect that both with this one 
And there's another skein that I just uh, that I did with some sort of resist technique where I only did one dip. So there will be less rinsing required than, for example, with skeins that had two and more dips. I think squeezing it out well before letting the indigo oxidize. You see, there is some color in there, but not too much. I think squeezing it out before all the indigo starts to oxidize can help, um, as can rinsing a lot outside. But anyway, I am going to rinse this until the water runs clear and then hang it up to dry, and then I'll show you the finished yarn. I expect that all these blues will lighten considerably once it's dry. The gradient is a little more muted when dry than it was wet, fresh from the indigo vat, but I think it's still beautiful. We have some of the original creamy off-white from our Knit Picks Dishy yarn, and then this beautiful denim blue um, from the outside of the skein. And I think that this could turn into a lot of really fantastic projects. I am really excited that the indigo was able to penetrate through multiple layers of the yarn. Um, I know you can use a lot of different resist techniques with the indigo, like shibori where you can get stunning white and blues, but I wasn't sure if you were had multiple layers of the fabric how deeply the dye could penetrate. And so I think as long as you massage the dye into something tied up, you might not get a huge difference between the outer layer and the second layer. Um, and so this opens up some more possibilities. I am really excited to try to explore some of these other techniques that I mentioned with an indigo vat in the future. And I hope um, to be filming some more videos and sharing those with you soon. I would like to send a huge thank you to Stony Creek Colors for sending me their American Grown Indigo and working with me when I had some issues setting up my first vat. They gave me excellent advice and were really worked with me all day to troubleshoot my vat so I could get something working to share these fun videos with you. Stony Creek Colors now has a kit complete with the Rit Color Remover that I use to set up my vat so that way you can set up your own hydrosulfite vat with their American Grown Indigo. And I'll provide a link to that in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and thank you so much for watching these Indigo Week videos and my first attempts of playing with a hydrosulfite indigo vat. Don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And finally, if you would like to support Chemnitz on a more personal level, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. Patreon is a platform for fans to support the creators of content that they enjoy. And in exchange for your support, I offer some really cool and really cool perks that include early access to a new dyeing video every month, exclusive behind the scenes sneak peek videos, and more. You'll find a link in the video description and the iCard, and you should really check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video.